It's a good thing you can't see below my, like right here, because my buttons keep popping open. I don't want to get up and down for this. It took me about two hours just to set up to film this video. <laughs> and I'm tired. Can I take a nap and just film later? <laughs> friends and welcome back to The Air Effect. I'm Christina and today I'm going to share the first video in a series of my vintage wardrobe tour. I originally thought maybe I could film this all in one but all of the dresses that you can see behind me are from 1910 including this one to 1962 or so and there are 91 dresses, 92 dresses in this collection and it's a lot. I don't think I could make a full video of everything. <laughs> I don't have the time, neither do you. So, I'm going to break up this wardrobe tour into probably about six to seven of just what I have behind me. And then if I decide to do 1970s to modern, that could be another five videos. So it's potentially a 10 video series <laughs> on my wardrobe tour. But today we are going to focus on the pieces that I have that are from 1910 to 1940s. Now I do want to say for those of you who are especially new to the vintage community, I have been collecting vintage for about 10 years. I started by thrifting vintage when I was 19 or 20. I did not get all of this overnight. I did not acquire all of this in a month. I didn't even acquire it in a year. It has been literally a decade of thrifting, eBay searching, Etsy searches, following Facebook sale posts, trading with friends, getting things given to me, just garage sailing, antique stores, vintage stores. There is a plethora of ways that you can build your vintage wardrobe. Most of what I own, I spent 30 to 40 dollars on or less. I just want to encourage you if you're new to the vintage community, if you're looking for larger sizes, if you're on a really tight budget, if you just feel like you can't find everyday pieces, most of what I own I would wear every day. There's not a lot in here that's special occasion because my goal has always been to build a practical vintage wardrobe. I feel like just now 10 to 12 years after I started collecting, I finally have a very large base of practical vintage clothing that I can wear as a mom, I can wear while I'm breastfeeding, I can wear while I'm pregnant, um, all of these things. It's taken a long time to build this up. So don't despair if you're new to the community. You can build up a vintage wardrobe. It just takes a lot of patience, searching, putting your name out there as somebody who loves vintage. With that said, let's get started on my 1910 to 1940s vintage dresses. So the first one that I want to talk about is actually on the mannequin behind me. And this is actually not something that I have ever worn or will ever wear. But it is very, very special to me because this was my great grandmother's dress and she made it. I am unsure of the exact era because most of my family says that she probably made it and wore it in the 1920s but the style is very Edwardian very 1910s it closes entirely with snap buttons it's got the higher neckline my guess is that it was made probably between 1910 and 1919 I'm not 100% sure on the era but it was given to me by my family because they know that I love and I treasure vintage garments and they couldn't think of anybody that they would <laughs> rather have it and I felt so special because my great-grandmother had 13 living children and I have a massive family on that side and I just feel very honored to know that they trusted me to keep this as part of our family history I am I'm very very happy to have it in my collection so next from the 1920s is this beautiful blue 1920s dress that I bought off of eBay for about $35 shipped. Um, she does have quite a few issues and I only wore her once for a video where I was really sad that you didn't actually get to see her because it was nighttime and the way that I had planned to film just didn't work out. So 
I have worn it once. It does fit me when I'm not pregnant, but this is something that it's very, very delicate and I'm really afraid to wear it too much, but it is really, really beautiful. It has a very like flowy um, hemline. It's definitely made for dancing. And one of the interesting details is that there is a weight in the neckline meant to sit inside the neck and kind of reveal this under layer, which is also sheer. I might end up using this pattern to replicate my own 1920s dresses because I actually really like this cut on my body and I didn't think that I would. But overall, it's just really beautiful, very delicate. So next is the 30s and I have one, maybe two dresses from the 30s. There's one that I'm not sure and then there's this one. This one I bought from a friend of mine. Um, she is on Instagram as Isadora Drunken. You should definitely look her up if you're into vintage style. So she has a wardrobe sale account where I bought this beautiful green 1930s dress. Um, with the most amazing waistline and I really love the details around the neckline and I actually bought this uh, well for myself because I wanted a 30s dress that fit but I also have some plans for a future lookbook once the baby is born so definitely worth it so the next dress I'm not 100% sure if this is 1930s or 1940s but this was given to me um, it came with this little belt with what appears to be glass details and wooden details and it has these pretty little bow like things on almost applique but these bow details I posted in a vintage group and a lot of people we're not really sure. Um, some people said late 30s, some people said early 40s, but regardless, this is a piece that I haven't worn yet because it was stored in the basement of somebody's grandma's house and the zippers that are at the neckline um, and the zipper along the side have disintegrated. So I need to replace those and I also, there are just a few little spots that need repair. But this was given to me by a person in the town that I used to live in. Um, I posted in a group called Buy Nothing and I said if you ever have clothing that you don't know what to do with that is vintage, I will take it. Um, and so she gave me quite a few pieces from her grandma. Most of them were fur coats, but then she also had this dress. So um, this is really pretty. It's a knit. It's definitely a fall weight dress. And I once I get it mended I will probably wear it in the fall next is a dress that I more recently found I found this on our anniversary trip to Oregon I found it in a thrift store for five dollars and it is this 1940s green and red checked box it's got like square polka dots basically <laughs> dress with these big old pockets with fringe and uh, when we walked into the thrift store, this lady said everything, all the clothes are $5. And I didn't really expect to find much because it was a very junky looking thrift store on the outside. It kind of looked like where you would go to get murdered. <laughs> but I went in anyway, being the person that I am. And it was actually really nice inside. And uh, most of the clothes in the clothing section were modern, but I saw this pattern and I pulled it out expecting it to be modern and then noticed that the tag is old. Uh, this was a really, really lucky find. It's exactly my size. It is so beautiful. Um, it's a really nice fabric and there was literally one split seam in the whole dress and that was it. So yeah, this was $5. This is one of my favorite dresses. I love it for winter, especially. It's a very holiday looking dress. Next is another thrift find, and this was, I believe, $8. And this is not a dress, this is actually a robe. It's, it is open at the waist, there is nothing to close it below the waist. Um, it's got these nice big buttons and a giant collar. And the tag says, styled by loungies, which is partially how I know it was loungewear. But this is something I had actually been looking for forever. I have always wanted a little collection of house dresses and especially now being pregnant I really wanted some cotton house dresses that I could wear when I need to breastfeed and so when I found this I was so excited. Um, it's so beautiful. It fits perfectly. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, 
and it was eight dollars so that was definitely one of my more exciting thrift finds oh it's so wrinkly but this is a tony karen classic uh this is a 1940s black and white dress that i bought three or four years ago um from a seller called lottie dotty vintage back when she was doing a lot of facebook sales um this is one of my favorite dresses um it has this beautiful pattern it does have a seam rip that i need to fix but <laughs> overall it is in really good condition and it's just a really classic cut and someday it'll fit again i hope because it's one of my favorite dresses and I really, I can't bring myself to sell it even though I haven't fit into it for about three years, so. Next up is an Etsy find. This actually was sold to me in a lot of two dresses that I believe I bought for about $20. Um, the seller had labeled them as pattern or costume pieces um, because she thought they were too flawed to actually wear. There were two dresses in the lot. The other one that I had I sold because I just didn't quite like the cut on me. But this one is a really really pretty cut and there's honestly not that much wrong with it. There is some fade around the collar and there is one moth hole on the back that I've never fixed but honestly when you're wearing it and especially because I generally wear slips under my vintage you can't really tell. I really really love the cut and the colors, the flowers, it's just so pretty. Next is this really cute 1940s cold rayon. Got the flower and bow print and the collar is so darling on this. I really, really, really love the pattern. And I do love the collar and the details. It's got these pretty little flowers on it. It does have a couple stains. This one, this one I bought in a lot off of eBay. There was a lot of about 12 dresses. And the entire lot, I think, was $91, so I think it rounded out to about $10 per dress, ten, a little under $10, like $7 to $10. Um, I bought a couple of lots last year off of eBay because I had the money and I really wanted to kind of jumpstart selling vintage, and I ended up keeping quite a few dresses from those lots, and I can't remember if it was one of the ones where it came out to $7 per dress or if it was one where it was $12 per dress but either way that's a really good deal. Next is another dress from one of those eBay lots and again I can't remember if it was $12 or $7 for the dress but it is this purple plaid 1940s dress with the bow and some buttons. It is missing one of the buttons and it's got a repair here under the arm and another repair on the other side and this one I love it it's so pretty but it is not breastfeeding friendly it's always a toss-up for me how many dresses I should keep that are not breastfeeding friendly so I do have another purple plaid that is 1950s and I am debating if I need to <laughs> and also which one is more practical which the other one kind of is more practical um, because the other one unbuttons but it's so pretty and I just cannot get over the colors, so it might be one of those dresses where I wear it for occasions when I don't have to breastfeed. Next up, this one does have quite a few, well not quite a few flaws, it do, this one does have one major flaw. Um, it is this 1940s dress, it's more of a formal dress, so this would be a special occasion, I'd probably wear it to church or something, um, and it is fairly sun faded, it has this section up here that's more purpley which is the faded area and then it kind of goes into blue. This really doesn't bother me because the dress itself is so pretty. It has the beautiful rhinestones and the pin tucking around the neckline and all of the embroidery. So this one I bought in a lot of about five dresses. I think it came out to $30 for all five dresses. So this was a really good deal. It was a mending lot that someone was selling in a Facebook group and um, I decided to keep this one. Next is this beautiful black dress that I have had forever. This is one of my first ever vintage finds at the thrift store. Um, it really looks beautiful on. I will find a photo obviously for most of these. Um, this one has a bow in the back and the detailing that really makes it hug your figure. It's a very like sexy little black dress but it's also pretty modest in the cut. This one I found thrifting way back before I even 
knew how to date vintage and place it in a certain era, I probably got it for like, I would say $5. And I just grabbed it thinking how beautiful it was and it's only in recent years that I've learned how to more accurately place the era of vintage and this one is 40s, it's a little back dress, hasn't fit me in quite a while but I kind of keep it for nostalgia's sake because I really liked the way it fit when it did fit me. These last two dresses, I'm not 100% sure if they are late 40s or early 50s, but I'm going to put them in this video just because I have a lot of 50s dresses and I needed to break some of them off. So this pink dress I have worn before. You may have seen it if you saw my gender reveal photo on Instagram where we announced we're having a girl, but it has these pretty little bows. Um, I feel like it's probably late 40s, and I got this one off of Etsy. It does unbutton down the front, and it also has a side zipper, so that's a really big bonus because it will be breastfeeding friendly. Um, and yeah, it's just really pretty. I like the little detail of the bows and the buttons, and the fabric print is really cute. And there's not much wrong with it other than the split seam, so. And lastly, again, I'm not sure if this is late 40s or early 50s, is this beautiful cream sheer dress. This is another formal dress that I am keeping because I'm not sure if it will fit me after I have the baby, but I think it might. Um, this one has these pretty lace details and it's a closer fit to the body, so I don't know how I would like it on, but this one I bought from my friend Kenny. She is colorfully nasty on Instagram and she sells on Facebook as Rainbow Lady Vintage. Honestly, she sent me a box of eight dresses and four of them were free and I think I paid $80 altogether. So if you break it down like that, this was a $10 <laughs> purchase, but I think she ended up wanting $20 to $25 for the four dresses that I did pay for. And then she put in four that were wounded that I could fix and do whatever with. So um, this one was a really good find um, by her and it was from an estate sale that she went to. And I just can't get over the buttons and the lace and the, it's so pretty. But that is it for my 1910s to 1940s dresses. I hope that you enjoyed this video and seeing this little portion of my vintage wardrobe. I will be filming a lot more videos in this series. If you have any questions about how to date vintage, I do have a video that I made quite a while ago. It is still pretty accurate, although there are some things that I have learned that are more helpful. So at some point, I do hope to film a new one to help you figure out where your vintage lies along the era scale. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that wherever you are, you are well and safe. And until I see you again, have a beautiful day and thank you for watching. Bye.